the most plausible explanation supported by literally all of the circumstantial evidence is that the virus originated in one of those two laboratories in Wuhan. All the way back in January, it was pretty well documented by Chinese scientists that it did not originate in the food market. But wherever it originated, Maria, we know that the Chinese Communist Party was both criminally negligent and incompetent at first, and then deliberately, deliberately malevolent in the way they responded to this virus for their own people and the world. And that was Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton with me on Sunday Morning Futures in early 2020. He was spot on about the origins of COVID nearly three years ago. Just this week, the Energy Department and the FBI Director Christopher Wray confirmed what we already knew, that COVID-19 most likely leaked from the Wuhan lab. Joining me right now is the man himself back with me, the Arkansas Senator. Tom Cotton is a member of the Senate Armed Services, Judiciary, Intel, and Joint Economic Committees. He's the author of the book, Only the Strong, Reversing the Left plot to sabotage American power. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Maria. It's good to be on with you again. And, and I want to thank you for your courage and your honesty. You came on that program, Sunday Morning Futures, with me uh, several times in early 2020. And you told us what you knew. And you told us, based on the intelligence that you had, what you expected in terms of the origins of COVID-19. And you were slammed for it. I've got some headlines here. Uh, from the media. Washington Post, Tom Cotton keeps repeating a coronavirus fringe theory that scientists have disputed. New York Times, Senator Tom Cotton repeats fringe theory of coronavirus origins. It goes on and on. Here is Politico. Tom Cotton playing a dangerous game with his coronavirus speculation. MSNBC, Cotton repeats coronavirus conspiracy theory despite evidence. Senator, what do you want to say to all those media outlets? <laughs> Well, Maria, uh, I appreciate you uh, joining me in exploring the most likely explanation uh, for this virus, which is the Wuhan labs. And you know, the only conspiracy uh, back in the early of early part of 2020 was a conspiracy of silence among liberals in the media uh, and the federal bureaucracy and Democrats in Congress to try to suppress the common sense, evidence-based conclusion that so many Arkansans had reached is that the Chinese communists were responsible because of their negligent uh, practices in this lab for unleashing this pandemic on the world. Yeah. That's the only conspiracy theory, theory that was circulating around. And unfortunately, you still see, in some degree, that conspiracy of silence. You see White House officials this week bending over backwards to say they don't have a consensus, there's no firm conclusions to apologize for or even defend Chinese communists. Just like last month, they did the same thing when China sent a spy balloon to America, speculating that it could have gotten blown off course from Guam to Alaska. That, that's a heck of a win, uh, Maria. Wow. That's what's dangerous. Is that the uh, Biden administration and liberals in the media still have this mindset that somehow if we appease Chinese communists, if we mollify them, if we kowtow to them, then they won't take provocative action towards America. That's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. And, and I'm glad you use the word dangerous because it has gotten <clears throat> downright dangerous. We know that the CCP wants to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. We know that they've been stealing our intellectual property, costing American business six, seven, eight hundred billion dollars a year. We know about all of their surveillance tools, and we know that they covered up the unleashing of a deadly virus and will not allow any investigation to take place uh, in Wuhan. So I ask you, why? Why is this administration so soft on China, and what can you as an elected official do about it? Well, as part of pattern of Joe Biden's career, he, he's always excused Chinese communist aggression uh, and wrongdoing. I mean, as recently as the 2020 campaign, he was saying that China is not a competitor to the United States. And he even goes out of his way still to say that he doesn't want a Cold War. Where, well, I don't either, and most Arkansans don't. But if China is waging a Cold War against us, as it have been for decades, our only choice is to win or, or to lose. And unfortunately, this administration has a losing policy right now. What we should be doing is taking actions that are long overdue to make it clear to China that there are consequences 
for unleashing this pandemic on the world, those consequences for invading our airspace, things like banning TikTok, banning Chinese nationals from buying farmland in America, having reciprocal treatment for their diplomats and spies in America that they impose on Americans in China. Most Arkansan thinks that's a very simple proposition, is that whatever China does to us, we should do to them. Simple reciprocity. Yeah, and that's exactly what a handful of governors are doing right now. They're stepping up because of the void that the Biden administration is leaving in terms of the pushback on China. So I spoke with uh, Governor Glenn Youngkin on Sunday Morning Futures on Sunday, and he told Ford Motor, we don't want your EV, uh, uh, you know, your um, factory in Virginia because you're using Chinese technology. The company he mentioned was Cattle. Here's Glenn Youngkin with me on Sunday. Watch this. We went to work to fully understand what was going on between Ford and a company called Cattle that is not just influenced, but, but controlled by the Chinese Communist Party and to not allow them to use a Trojan horse structure to gain access to taxpayer incentives that were put into the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, this is using taxpayer money to further and enrich a Chinese company at the expense of America. I'll tell you, Senator, the CCP has been incredibly strategic and smart the way they have infiltrated America from things like that, technology company Cattle, which, by the way, we learned later, is a Hunter Biden investment. So he also has a stake in Cattle, which is undermining the United States. But from things like that to the universities and the academia infiltration as well. Yeah, Maria, first off, I want to commend Governor Youngkin for a bold decision to uh, refuse siding in Virginia. You know, the Democrats' reckless tax and spending package last year was designed to try to get America producing the minerals we need and the technology we need for such uh, things as batteries for cars or uh, other critical rare earth elements and related technologies. It wasn't designed to allow American companies like Ford to simply do it, go into joint ventures with Chinese companies here in America to take advantage of it. That's a failure of the Biden administration, the Democrats in Congress, who wrote a law and regulations that allow it. Yeah. You're right about the further point, too, is that there, there's a vast network of what I call the China lobby. And many of them aren't even intentionally uh, shilling for the Chinese communists, but their economic interests are so deeply entwined uh, that they are very sensitive to any political steps to hold Chinese communists accountable. We have to expose the China, China lobby and stop it. By the way, they're also coming through the wide open southern border, right? I mean, I'm speaking with border agents and they're telling me increasingly that Chinese citizens, nationals, Chinese nationals who may be tied to the CCP, they get their directives, they go to America and take information back. Um, and, you know, I was surprised to see so many Chinese nationals coming through the border because we know that they're already abusing the visa process. They don't need to come to the border, but it's wide open. So why not? And your committee uh, grilled uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland yesterday, the Judiciary Committee, on America's most pressing issues. You had a chance to ask the AG questions on this administration's asylum policies. Let's take a look at that based on threats specifically to individuals on gangs where the country was unable to protect the person. Well, okay, well, you're partly responsible for protecting Americans. Honduras government can protect its own people except for 36 out of every 100,000 for murders. Guatemala, 17 out of every 100,000. The murder rate in New Orleans last year was 70 for every 100,000. Should American citizens in places like New Orleans and Baltimore and St. Louis begin to seek asylum in countries like Honduras and Guatemala under your asylum principles? Such a good question, Senator. Were you pleased with uh, his answers yesterday? No, the attorney, attorney general uh, is being run roughshod by progressives inside the department. The simple point I made is that asylum is designed to protect people facing persecution based on, say, religious beliefs or political beliefs or ethnicity. It's not designed to help people escape da uh, dangerous countries or, or poverty. Even if it were, we have plenty of American cities run by Democrats that are more dangerous than Central American countries. We should not be opening our borders to anyone who simply wants to come here because they want a better job or a better way 
of life. If that were the case, there would be literally billions of people who would want to come to America. We have to follow our immigration laws. We have to provide uh, opportunities who, to people who are going to make life better for current Americans. That's the point of our immigration laws, is to improve the lives of our current citizens, not to throw open the doors to billions of people who want to come here and improve their lives. Is he complicit? I mean, he said, look, I, you know, made a decision not to get involved in the Hunter Biden investigation. Meanwhile, he sends all his goons to, you know, raid President Trump and then takes pictures of everything they found and it goes viral. The Senate voted to kill the Biden administration's ESG investment rule, encouraging private investment plans, uh, fiduciaries to consider environmental, social and governance factors when making an investment decision. But the president said he's going to veto it. Even this move is going to impact 150 million Americans. What are your thoughts there? And, and what about Merrick Garland? Do you think that he's telling the truth when he says the border is secure or when he says, I, you know, purposely did not get involved in the Hunter Biden investigation because of any conflicts? I mean, this guy's still walking around and this investigation's how long now? Six years into the influence peddling investigation? Yeah, no, Mer Mayor Garland was not telling the truth. He dissembled on many points yesterday, for instance, on why we haven't arrested any of the people who broke the law protesting outside of Supreme Court justices' home. So he dissembled on point after point after point. Senator, we're watching your leadership and certainly all that you have been doing, and we appreciate it. Our viewers would like answers. Uh, it's, it's been a tough two years, Senator. What does the next two years look like? Well, hopefully, uh, with a Republican majority in the House, we're going to pump the brakes on the worst parts of the Biden agenda and begin to get some accountability for their uh, overreach uh, from the vast administrative state that they've weaponized against so many Americans. What are your priorities right now in the Senate? The most urgent priorities we face are rebuilding our military, making sure that our munition stockpiles are ready to confront not just the threat in Europe, but even more importantly, the threat that China poses in the Western Pacific. Really important. Senator, thanks very much for your work. We'll be watching. Thank you. Good to see you this morning. Senator Tom Cotton.